So I was going to be a scientist my whole life. I loved uh, math and science when I was growing up. And I got to college, and you take those kinds of things, and they become quite arcane the more advanced that you get. The reality is, is I realized the practical sides of the science is what I was interested in, and so I applied to law school. I was at my first law firm, a wonderful law firm in Chicago, and I got a call from a partner who said, hey, you have a chemistry degree. Do you want to do a patent litigation? You know, most people with chemistry degrees want to do patent litigation. And I said, what's patent litigation? He said, trust me, you're going to like this. And I said, okay. I'll help you out. And, and I did. And I quickly realized that patent litigation was the best kind of litigation uh, that you could do. You're dealing with inventions and inventors, the whole creative process. And once I worked on that, just the one case, uh, I was sold. I think a recent career highlight is the success we had for Gilead in preventing Merck um, from enforcing its patents against Gilead's sofosfavir. And while we didn't prevail at the jury level, we were able to convince the court to set aside the verdict just a month after the jury verdict and, and uh, not enforce the patents against uh, Merck. We had a lot of setbacks in that case, but uh, our team kept going until we saw it through to what was, at the end of the day, a just end. And we just hope that that'll be sustained on appeal. Uh, you know, that'll be another year and a half uh, from now. But I'm very proud of the role that, that I played in that case in arguing the motion uh, where the court ultimately set aside the verdict. Another highlight is the, uh, the Mayo versus Prometheus case, uh, where I represented the Mayo Clinic in its groundbreaking um, Section 101 challenge to a patent. The case is very controversial. Uh, and has to do with whether or not one can patent uh, natural phenomena. We went up to the Supreme Court not once, but twice. And while I didn't argue the case there, I uh, was the key person uh, on the Supreme Court case for strategy. I argued the appellate case. I argued the district court case. It started in 2004, and we got all the way to 2012. And finally, justice was done for man. The future challenges in life science litigation are many. One is the political, and anybody who picks up the newspaper can see the debate we as a society are having over the role of pharmaceutical companies, the role of the government in healthcare, and the role of innovation. That political debate bleeds into every pharmaceutical case that you try before a judge, or a jury. Tied to that, but I'd put in a separate category, are new kinds of, of treatments for which we have new legal regimes. The one that readily comes to mind is something called biosimilars, um, which um, loosely speaking are generics for drugs that are not chemicals, but are biologic molecules. And that's going to be a subject of some huge battles uh, in the near future um, between those companies that think they ought to maintain um, what right now is a monopoly, and those companies that think they ought to be able to make something that should be called similar, such that they can compete. And that is really going to be uh, a hot topic in the next 10 years. Mm -hmm.